interesting pans. Once the site of a great battle. Once at a great brewery. And once a great salt works. Well, at least it still has a great pub. But not for long. Preston Pans is pretty old. This 1636 map shows a sizeable town. Its name is derived from Preston Village, just uphill from the shore, and the huge pans used by the shore to boil seawater and make salt. In the past the town had many industries. As well as salt works, there was a pottery, a soap factory, a colliery, brick and fire clay works, and a large brewery, complete with a number of malt houses. Not one of those industries has survived. The brewery, John Fowler's Brewery, was long-standing in the town, perhaps going way back to the time of that battle in 1745. It closed in 1969, nine years after being taken over by Northern Breweries. Today, the name lives on in a microbrewery inside the Goth. Well, this is the inside of that lovely Edwardian pub. Um, it was built in 1908 and it was organised under what you would term uh, Gothenburg principles, uh, part of the Gothenburg system. Um, and that was a system that originated in, in Sweden in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, and it was created to deal with a, a real problem with drunkenness in the city of Gothenburg. I mean, in the middle of the 19th century, you had um, drunkenness in many big cities in Europe. If you think about the, the gin palaces and the likes of London. And the idea behind the system was that all every pub in the city of Gothenburg was now uh, run by a trust. And that trust stipulated exactly how these public houses would be run. Uh, there would be no more of the the gin palaces, no more of the kind of bright, attractive public houses that were designed to draw people in, full of mirrors and bright lights and gilded surfaces and places that were real palaces uh, for people who lived in dark, dank hovels for much of the time. They were attracted to these gin palaces and attracted to drink gin and the amount of drunkenness in these uh, around about such places was just unbelievable. So the Gothenburg system was created to deal with that drunkenness in the city of Gothenburg. And uh, as I say, the pubs were more modestly decorated, but still comfortable. They didn't sell spirits, which is a kind of major thing. They, they still sold beer so that uh, men could still go for a pint after work. And um, a certain percentage of the profits, I think it was any profits over 5% were ploughed back into the community to allow the, the building of things like libraries, museums, parks and such like. So this was a real innovative idea and system uh, that took, took hold and spread from the city of Gothenburg to other parts of Europe who were also trying to deal with uh, a terrible level of drunkenness. In Scotland, uh, the, the Gothenburg system certainly uh, spread here. Um, 
And it is said that it spread mainly to mining areas. And I suppose when you think about it, at one time, most, most areas in Scotland were mining areas. Um, but I suppose you had certain areas that were more given over to the production of coal than others. Uh, Fife, for example. And some of these um, coal mining areas had found themselves with public houses that were organised under the Gothenburg system. I think that there is, some of them are still around, I think there's, there's one perhaps in Kelty, uh, and the one um, in Newton Grange, just outside Edinburgh, near the National Mining Museum. And again, these were just modestly decorated and uh, uh, furnished, but they were comfortable, and miners could go for a, a beer after work. This particular public house, it's now called the Goth, although at one time it was called the Gothenburg. But it started life in 1908, and I think at that time it was called the Trust Tavern. And um, this photograph here shows it in that first year of operation in 1908. It's just a lovely old photograph, and you can see that there was a uh, Gothenburg stout, a beer available, and Gothenburg sandwiches, yeah. Um, it changed its name to, I think it was the uh, the Fourth Tavern in 1965. And then it changed name again uh, to the Gothenburg, and I think it was 19, 1986. Due to unrealistic and quite drastic rises in energy costs right now, it is predicted that potentially thousands of public houses in Scotland will be forced to close. This energy crisis is a real disaster for the hospitality industry. Businesses just simply can't put up with the unmanageable increase in the cost of the gas and electricity. This public house will close on the 1st of January next year just less than two months time because it is simply not practical it's impossible to manage the gross increase in energy costs which are jumping up to are forecast to jump to something like £8,000 a month no small business can deal with that that is a nonsense I mean as well as thousands of pubs potentially having to shut their doors. Many may just shut their doors over winter. This is a real disaster that will affect not just the hospitality industry, but the tourist industry and just so many other things. And given the scale of the disaster and the unmanageable scale of it, perhaps it's about time to UK government pulled its finger out. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care.